Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this video, we are gonna create a basic UI and also add a goal counting system. But first up, let's fix the long if statement in the player movement script. This was suggested by a guy who's going by the name Espaso Preto on the YouTube, so big thanks to him. And let's open up the player movement script. We need to create a new field collider to the player collider, and we can delete this vector to player size. And also we can delete everything that has something to do with this vector to player size. So we can delete this line and obviously we can delete the long if statement itself. All right. And now in the start method, we need to set the player collider to be equal to the get component collider 2D, which effectively caches the collider 2D, which in this case is the circle collider 2D in this player collider field. And now just where we deleted the horrendously long if statement, we can write if player collider dot overlap point. And if the point that overlaps is mouse position, so mouse pass, we can move. And let's test if this works. So we can click on the player and it's gonna move. We click somewhere else and it's not moving and we click somewhere else and we drag over the player and it's not moving as well. So it's working just as before, but now the code is much more short. So again, big thanks to Espaso Predo and to all of you guys out there, please keep those suggestions coming because they are really gonna get applied in these tutorials. Now let's make the UI. We are gonna create a canvas. So we right click in the hierarchy and we wanna create the UI canvas. And now the canvas is really, really huge, but we want it to be the size of the camera. So we change the render mode to screen space camera and we specify the camera by dragging the main camera over here. We also want this canvas to scale nicely. So UI scale mode is going to be scale with screen size and it's going to be expand and we are going to shoot for 1080p in portrait mode. So X is going to be 1080 and Y is going to be 1920. Now let's add the texts which are gonna display the scores of our players. So right click on canvas and create UI text and let's put some placeholder number over here. So let's change the new text to display zero. The width is gonna be 300 and the height is gonna be 200. Let's change the font size to about 150 could be nice. We want the score to be on this side of the screen on the right edge. So we are going to change the anchor point to be right center. The position X could be somewhere around minus 150. But first we also need to change the alignment to be center and also center on the vertical. And let's rotate it negative 90 degrees. And the position Y could be also 150. Cool, so let's rename this text to AI score text or TXT for short. And now while it's selected in the hierarchy, press Ctrl D to duplicate it. This is gonna be called player score text and this is gonna be on minus 150 on the Y axis. But I really don't like the way that this text looks. We should add another font. First up, let's create a folder called fonts and let's drag a font that you like over here. If you want to get the same exact font that I am using, the link is in the video description. This font is called M plus and is really awesome. And now just select one of the score texts and let's change the font to this medium one. Looks nice. And let's do the same to the player score text. Awesome. Now we want to make the colliders, which are going to detect when a goal has happened. So let's go to BG barrier. And under barrier, we are going to create yet another game object. This one is going to be called goal collider holder. And under this game object, we want to create another game object, AI goal. And to this game object, we want to add component box collider 2D. And let's drag this game object to the AI side of the screen. And when we zoom in, we want to have the bottom edge of the collider to be in the middle of this cutout. Let's change the size X to somewhere around 3.2. Yeah, this looks good. And we also want to take this is trigger field. That's because we do not want this collider to interact with the puck. This collider is over here just so we can detect when the puck hits it. Right now we can also duplicate this AI goal, rename it to player goal. 
and it's gonna be the same just that the y coordinate is going to be negative now we need to create tags for these ai goal and player goal game objects that's because later when we are checking for collisions we need to know if the puck hit ai goal or player goal or if it hit something else to create a tag just click on this untagged and we want to add a tag we want to add ai goal and player goal and now just select ai goal over here and for the player goal we are obviously gonna select player goal next up let's create a scene manager game object and let's also create a score script and drag it to the scene manager now let's open up score script we can delete all of this and also these two using statements and we want to be using unity engine.ui inside the score script class we want to create a public enum score which is going to contain ai score and player score an enum is simply a text representation of numbers as you can see ai score has value of zero and player score has value of one this way we do not need to remember if one is ai score or if one is player score we can just write score dot ai score or score dot player score and we are all set then we want to create public text ai score text and player score text and now it's a good time to set these fields up in the unity editor so let's select scene manager and add ai score text over here and player score text down here and we want to have also private int field ai score and player score let's write an increment method which is going to increment the scores it's going to be public void and it's going to accept a score variable which is our enum and it's going to be called which score and it's obviously going to tell us which score we should increment so if which score equals score dot ai score we want to set the ai score text dot text because we want to access the text property to be equal to incremented ai score dot to string and else we want to set the player score text to be equal to incremented player score and also dot to string so that's done now we want to create a puck script and we want to drag it to the puck and we want to open it up in visual studio we can delete this void update method and we need to create a field of type score script score script instance and we have this field here because we are gonna call the increment method in the score script but this increment method is not static so we need to have some kind of an instance of this score script class and while we could create a singleton and you can check out my tutorial if you want to learn how to do that it's not really necessary here and it would just add complexity we also want to create a public static bool was goal which is obviously going to tell us if it just was goal or not and this is going to be a property with public getter and private setter we also want to keep track of rigid body 2d on this puck game object so private rigid body 2d rb and in the start method we want to set rb equals get component rigid body 2d and we also want to set was goal to be false now we want to create a brand new method private void on trigger enter 2d and as you can see visual studios intellisense is even suggesting this method this is a built-in unity method just like start or update and let's change the parameter name collision to something more descriptive like for example other all right and now if not was goal this is here because we do not want to have goals before the puck is reset to the starting position after a previous goal and inside this if statement we want to check if other dot tag equals equals ai goal and it's important here to get the spelling right and we want to increment the score so we want to call a method increment on the score script instance and we want to pass in score script dot score dot player score and we can use this enum directly from the class because enums are static even though we have not specified public static here we also want to set the boolean was goal to be true and else if other dot tag is equal to player goal and we can copy the contents of the previous if statement paste them in here and we want to change this to ai score and now we want to add the code which is going to reset the puck's position and velocity and we could do this simply by just creating a method or not even creating a method at all but just set it inside these if statements but one important thing that we want to do is to wait one second after the goal 
and only after that one second we want to reset the puck's position and velocity. If you want to wait for a while, you have to use coroutines. And coroutine is basically a method returning IEnumerator, which is located in this system.collections namespace. They are useful because we can yield or wait for a certain time or until something happens and like. So private IEnumerator reset puck. First we wanna yield return new, wait for seconds real time and the time is gonna be one second. Then we wanna set was goal to false and we want to reset the velocity and position of the rigid body. So rb.velocity equals rb.position, which is equal to new vector 2 with coordinates of 0 and 0. And we have still one more thing to do, because now even after the goal, the AI would move and it would just hit the puck and it would look really silly. So we need to go to the AI script and we need to make the AI not move after a goal. This can be simply done by putting the whole contents of this fixed update method inside a large if statement. If not puck script that was goal and we want the whole fixed update to be inside this if statement. All right, and now we still have one more thing to do. That is to drag a score script instance onto this puck script located in the puck game object. We can do this by dragging the whole scene manager over here and it's automatically going to select the score script for us. And I have almost forgotten that we are not actually calling the reset puck position inside our puck script. So we need to go back to puck script and in these if statements which are checking for collisions, we need to add start coroutine reset puck and we need to do the same for the other if statement. And once we have that, we are really set. So let's test the game. And let's be generous here and let the AI win. One, all right. And now let's try to score against the AI. And as you can see, the puck is a bit buggy, but we are gonna fix that in future tutorials. All right, so we are winning 3-1. And now it's 3-2. And as you can see, after one second, the position of the puck is reset. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to get the code written in this tutorial, check it out on resocoder.com from the link in the description. And if this tutorial helped you, please give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel and even hit the bell button if you want to get notified when I release a new video. Stay tuned for future parts of this air hockey series because we have a lot to fix especially in the puck physics department. Follow me on social media, keep those suggestions coming and see you in the next video.